Now we're going to look at the dependent motion of multiple particles. So in the previous examples, we had multiple particles, but their motion didn't depend on each other. Here, we have multiple particles, but their motion does depend on each other. So I drew an example here, and you can see very clearly that if this particle A moves to the right, particle B is going to move as well. So because they're connected, we can find relationships between that motion. And these problems follow very specific steps to solve them. So we have three steps. The first step is to establish position coordinates for each weight. Here you're going to see something slightly different than before. So in this case, each coordinate must be directed along the path of motion. And the origin does not have to be the same for all particles. So in this case, I'll set an origin for B, so I'll set, and it has to be fixed, the origin has to be fixed. So for B, it has to be along the path of motion and a fixed point, so a fixed point would be the roof here, so I'll set the origin for B here, and its position will be down, and I'll call it XB. So I'll have you think for a second. I drew my B, my XB, to sort of the center of this pulley. But if I drew my XB down here, would that be different and would that be important? So I'll just leave that for you to think about and we'll come back to that later. Now for A, the position coordinate for A also has to be along the path of motion of A and from a fixed point. So I'm actually going to choose this pulley here and draw the position of A is going to be XA from that point. So it's, so as A moves, if A moves to the right, it's along this position vector here. Step two is to establish constraining equations. have one constraint per rope and ropes are inextensible so none of the ropes in this course will stretch at all so for this problem we have one rope and the rope starts here at the roof, it comes down, wraps around the three pulleys, and ends at A. So what we're doing here is we're establishing a relationship for the total length of that rope. And the way that we do that is we actually only look at the lengths that could potentially change. So I'm going to mark all of those points. So I'll call this um, point C. I'll call this point D. E, F, G, H, I, J, and I'm going to call this one K. So we don't care about anything that's not changing. So in this case, we don't care about the length from D to E, because no matter what the system does, that length will not change. Same thing as length from F to G will not change no matter what the blocks A and B do. Same thing with H to I will not change. So the only lengths that we care about is the length from C to D plus the length from um, E to F plus the length from G to H plus the length from I to J. And this length is going to be constant no matter what the blocks A and B do. So the lengths 
of the individual pieces might change, but the total length will remain constant. If we rewrite this equation in terms of A and B, the positions of A and B, because that's what we're interested in, we can see that the length from C to D is equal to XB. The length from E to F is also the distance XB. The lengths from G to H, and actually here you can see that the length from G to H will also not change because it's going from a fixed point to a fixed point. So this one we actually don't consider. And then the length from I to J will also be, con will be changing and is equal to XA. And that's equal to constant, meaning 2XB plus XA will be constant. I'm going to move this up. Now we have an equation that relates the position of XB and XA as constant. What if we took the derivative of this? If we took the derivative of this equation with respect to time, what we'd end up with is the velocity of B. So 2 times the velocity of B plus the velocity of A is equal to 0. So now we have another equation governed by this system. If we take the derivative of this with respect to time, we would end up with 2 times the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of A is equal to 0. So from that constraining equation of the rope, we actually end up with three equations for position, velocity, and acceleration. For step three, this goes into the geometry of motion. So for these problems, when we look at the length of the rope, we don't really care about the length of the rope. What we care about is the position of particle A and particle B and how that's changing. So if we consider a sum movement, so let's say we have x a prime, and this is equal to an initial position of a plus some sort of change in position a, and we do the same thing for b, we have nxb prime is equal to xb plus delta xb. And now we'll rewrite the equation that we had before, so we also know that 2xb plus xa equals constant. This equation has to hold true for any moment. So it also holds true at this new moment after the movement. So now we can say that 2xb prime plus xa prime is equal to constant, some constant value, which is considered the length of the rope. Now, if we fill in, we replace um, with the expanded versions, we would end up with 2 times xb plus delta xb plus xa plus delta xa is equal to constant. And I'm going to rearrange these equations, and you end up with 2 delta xb plus delta xa is equal to constant minus 2xb minus xa. Now, if we look at this equation here, it's the same as this which means it's equal to 0. So now we can say that 2 times delta xb plus delta xa is equal to 0, and then delta xb is equal to negative 1 half delta xa. So if you move xa by, say, 1 unit, xb is going to move by negative 1 unit. One more example that can kind of be tricky for students is that your position vectors don't have to be going either horizontally or vertically. So let's say you had a system like this, you had um, sort of a wedge here and you had a block on either side that was connected by a pulley. So let's say something like this. So here's your block A and your block B. The datum for these, would, you would set the datum for block B here at a fixed point. Now, I'm using the word datum now, so in this case, for these problems, datum um, is sort of the same thing as origin, so it's just setting that reference point. Here I'll set one datum for block B, and the position vector is going to be positive away from that datum towards block B. So that would be the position vector for block B. For block A, I'll set a datum on the other side of the pulley and direct it towards block A in the direction of motion of block A. So this would be 
for xa and the other side would be for xb. It's just very important that you set your position vector along the path of motion of the block or the weight or whatever it is. So in this case, let's say you set the datum here for block B, and then you set your position vector going horizontally or vertically or something like that. That would be absolutely incorrect because that's not the path of motion of that block.